as a beta tester for Topaz, I get the opportunity to preview updates. And the guys at Topaz have once again upped their game with their latest photo AI app. This is a one-stop app bringing their gigapixel, sharpening and denoise features together in one simple-to-use app. Today, I'm going to demonstrate just how easy it is to get amazing results in just a few seconds, upscaling, sharpening and reducing noise in one time-saving, simple-to-use app. You really need to see this to believe it. I'm Ken Hadfield. Welcome to the Better Photography Channel. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Topaz, as many of you all know, have a number of apps that they offer to help improve your photography. There's Topaz Gigapixel AI, Sharpen AI, and Topaz Denoise AI. With this Topaz Photo AI, it brings all those three together so you can make the adjustments in one window. It's amazing. The first thing they've done on the update is to get rid of all the bugs that they had originally. There was reports of certain bugs on the previous editions and that's now been ironed out. They've cleaned up the interface here by putting all the controls over to the right hand side so you can get everything together. And they've also improved the algorithms to make sure that you get the very, very best quality images. So you can actually process raw files here or JPEGs. And what you can do is bring them in one by one and use all of these three tools or just one or two of them. Whatever you want to use, you can actually just select which ones you prefer. What will happen when you first bring your image in is that Topaz will actually do an assessment of the images and then it will go into something called Autopilot. And it will actually suggest to you the sharpening, the denoising and the gigapixel settings that it suggests would give us the best results. But all of those are controllable by you as well. You can change them at your own heart's desire. First thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to bring an image that actually is a raw image. It's unprocessed. It's a large raw file and as you can see what it's done immediately is that it's had a look at the image. There's a little preview button here and that when that little green light comes on it tells you that it has processed the image and made the adjustments for what it thinks is the best settings for a better image. Now there's certain things you can do to look at this image. If you look at the bottom, that's the original image and that's the enhanced image. And already it's taken a lot of the noise out and processed it into a better image. So and the next setting is a comparison here. You can slide a slider across and you can actually look at which bits of the image you want to see the effect has taken place. And I just keep mine in the center there. But you can also use a side-by-side -side comparison here, where on this side you can see the original image, and on this side you can see the one that's been cleaned up. This control here is just to enlarge or reduce the size. I'm going to take it up a little bit to show you exactly how that's affected the image by expanding it to 400. As you can see, it's taken a massive amount of noise out, but there's further processing we can do to make that look even better. So let's go back to say 100%. What we have here is a various tools that's available to you. And what this has done already, as I say, is taken the image and decided what would be the best settings for it. And all of these have been applied. On here now, it's a raw file, it's huge. Whilst we're on the subject of scale, on the plugin in Lightroom and in Photoshop, this upscale is not available. The tool is not available. You need to use the standalone program, which comes into your applications, if you want to use any upscaling on this particular app. So if we look up here, there's a crop tool there. So I can bring it in and crop it into whatever I want. Shouldn't need to do that. As I say, it's a huge file. You can crop to various sizes there. The original ratio, these all these ratios there, a custom ratio as well. And you can actually choose the size yourself if you want to uh, choose the exact size. I'm going to cancel that because I don't need to do anything. Now the next thing you need to do, basically, is make sure that the effect is being applied to the right part of the image. This is where we go to subject. And what's happened here is the program has actually recognised the subject 
and filled it in beautifully. Um, and that's quite amazing. Now, if you press on the subject tool there, it'll bring in the various things you can do to adjust that selection. And what you can do is you can come down and you can actually add or subtract the mask. I'm not going to go into great detail. You can see what's happening here, but what I would suggest is there's two different brushes you can use. One is the AI brush, and that comes in, and um, as you can see, it's, it's adding to the mask there. Yeah, but it adds in, it does, it, it, it's kind of picky as to where it places the addition. And same with the sub subtraction. And it's not as accurate as using the regular brush. And as you can see, the regular brush, you can actually get a nice smooth selection. And we'll just take that back. Okay, so as you can see, if the mask doesn't fit correctly, you can use these brushes, make exactly the mask that you prefer. Brilliant. So we'll go back from that, and we then come to the various tools. Now, the noise tool is already in use. As you can see, the noise tool has introduced a little bit of blurriness. So I'm going to go to the sharpen tool, and we actually open it up by toggling that slider. And we go to the left side. Now, if you actually touch this little symbol here, it will actually give you some information. It'll tell you the automatic setting that is chosen, and it'll also give you some tips on how to use the tool, uh, the best way to, to use the tool. But if you click on that, it then opens up a menu where you can actually use different models. Now these models here are automatic models. You can shift them from one to the other until you see your preferred image. And on here, we'll leave it as standard and you can then actually work on the strength of the sharpening by just moving that slider along. Now every time that you make an adjustment, on the program it will always then re-render up here now what you might find is it takes some little time for that it depends on the processor on your computer i've got the very latest macbook brand new and it's got a lightning fast processor i have seen examples where rendering and it can take up to 30 seconds or a minute so you may have to be patient if you have an older computer with a slower processor I'm fortunate that I've got something that's much faster. But as you can see there, that's actually, we'll do the before and the after again. And you can see, I'll, I'll just take it up to a big magnification and just move that up a bit. And you can see that is the before, after, before, after. And you know what? That's really acceptable. I know it would take quite a long time in Photoshop to actually go in, make selections around the bird and actually do all the processing needed to, to get a picture anywhere near that. Now I've taken my time to show you the settings. I would have normally done that in less than 10 seconds. So at the end of the day, we have actually looked at subject only there. If you want to actually process the entire image, you toggle that off and it'll actually then sharpen the entire image. So it's great. You can have either or, which is perfect so if we go into the upscale which is the next thing and what it's going to do is going to upscale by two times you can do it up to six times which is the maximum setting there what you'll find is if you come across the little v here it'll tell you what the limitations are and it, it, the limitations are going to be that it can upsize to a maximum length of 32,000 pixels on each side which is pretty huge again you can select your own size if you so choose and it will allow you to actually make the adjustment that's upscaled by times two once again it looks to me as though it's actually added a little a bit of blur in there so we can go down and don't go into any of these settings down here it's not worth it go back to your sharpening we can actually just add the strength a wee bit it's going to re-render look at up here it's re-rendering up here take a little bit longer but again, you can mess with that and just bring the sharpening back. As you can see there, it is improving. Although what we're doing here is I'm enlarging an enormous file. And I'm pretty sure on a smaller file, the results will be even better. But this is a tool that I am going to use time and time again. But I've got a feeling I'm going to be pulling this particular app up and using this one because it does all three together. Whilst I'm on the subject of the app, I have an opportunity to offer my friends who are watching this video an opportunity to buy this program. I'm going to put a link below, which will take you straight through to uh, Topaz, and, and you get a whopping $40 discount by purchasing from that link. 
Now you need to know if you do do that, I do get a small consideration from Topaz for promoting the product for them. But I need to tell you that Topaz are the only photo processing company that I have an affiliate ship with. They're the only ones that I recommend to my friends at the moment because it is one of the strongest and most effective tools I've ever seen for photo processing. I have not seen such good results in any other program with this little effort from the user. Now, I would then normally come down and save it. If you're going to save it, it comes down, it opens a new window up. You can put a prefix on there and you can actually then send it back to whichever folder you want. On the Photoshop and Lightroom plugin, you can actually save it back to Photoshop. So I'm just going to put a test image on there. Go to save. It's actually going to do a final processing. It will now send it back to the original folder. And remember, I actually did enlarge this, so it's going to take some time to get to the the original location. It's done that now, so we go back. So to get rid of that, I'm just going to go up to File, Close Image, and it brings me back to my desktop again. So that was image processing on a RAW file. Now let's take a look at a couple of JPEGs. I'm going to pull this one down. And what's happened immediately, if you notice, it's already upscaling because it's recognised that this is a small JPEG. So it's actually making a suggestion that we upscale it to four times. And it's also seen that there is some blurring on the photo on the face. It's automatically, without me touching anything, it's applied the face recovery tool. So if we enlarge that, as you can see, that's the before and that's the after before and the after and that is quite remarkable there are additional tools below again it will tell you how to use it and that it shows you that it actually works extremely well with upscaling so if you lose definition when you're upscaling take it down into the face recovery if you have a human subject uh, well in animals as well actually and it will actually do a great job of bringing that detail back for you again you could do the slide to show as much of the image as you want and the effect that it's had on it. Side by side comparison. And then obviously we can zoom it as much as we like in there. Let's take it 100% and that is a nice image. So we'll come out of that one there now. Close the image. I'm not going to save it, but let's bring this one in because this is very interesting to me. As it, again, it's decided to enlarge the image and it's done the face recovery immediately. The other thing, incidentally, is if you press the cursor on the image, it will show you the before image as well. So you can see there her face is blurred, and then you let go, and you can see her face is now sharp. And what you can do with the face recovery here as well, you can select which faces you want to work on. So if you say, well, this one's blurred, this one not so, then you can actually select uh, the image that you want to switch off and it will only process the face on this young lady here then you press the apply to go on it's amazing that's going to be great for my wedding shots where i have someone that comes into the picture and maybe is standing a little bit further back i don't notice that the, the kind of off center with the the bride and groom or whatever i can now do this and in fact i'm not going to show you here but if there was 20 people on that image it would bring 20 faces boxes up and allow you to pick which of them you want to make the adjustments for. So you can actually adjust multiple people on multiple planes by using this incredible tool. It is just awesome. So as you can see there, we'll go back to the original there. We'll get the, the apply that first. We'll go back to the original. And as you can see, it's gone from that from the blur there to actually making it look much better i'm going to bring that in just a wee bit just to prove the point and you can see it it has applied originally applied a little bit of sharpening to this young lady here but what it's done for this girl it's done a great job of making a blurred image become nice and crisp and sharp so that is topaz photo ai update in august 2023 and just every time i say they can't get any better they do this amazing stuff and just blow me away 
if you want to try this you can try it free of charge use the link below and it will also i think allow you to uh, to test it free of charge and they even give you images test images like this one here that i picked up and you can try it for yourself before you buy but if you want to put all of your apps together and process your image for resizing denoise and sharpen this is the one for you and i certainly will be putting this up first whenever I bring my images in that need to have some adjustment made. So give it a try. Leave some messages down below. Tell me how you got on. And we'll see you next time on the Better Photography Channel.